Folks, it's Clint the Ball Chef, and on tonight's menu, we're going to be putting together some Hungarian goulash. Now, this certainly is not the recipe you had back when you were in grammar school, where they used ground meat and uh, elbow macaroni noodles, a little bit of uh, tomato sauce, and some uh, cafeteria spices. Oh no, it's not that one. And it is not probably the Hungarian version, which is kind of more of a soup with some little homemade noodles in it. I don't really care for that one. I've had that one too. Both the first and the second are not my style. This is more the continental cuisine. Hungarian goulash that most Westerners would find most appealing. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do mine. We started out here, we've got three pounds of cut up chuck. And uh, you don't need to use an expensive cut of meat on this dish at all because it's going to be stewed down and there's no sense in wasting it. So I'm going to pour in just a little liber liber liberal, 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 I hate that word, amount of uh, flour in my uh, mixing bowl here. And all these folks out here that are so germ conscious, we've got on some plastic gloves so that nobody dies from anything. More people tell me I'm going to die of this or that, it's about ready to drive me crazy. And as you can see here, I have generously floured off this chopped chuck. Alright, the next step, I'm going to put some cooking oil in here. We're going to be using some sunflower oil. In about a one tablespoon just to put on the bottom of that pan and a half or anything I'm not sure you so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our stove on medium high heat we're gonna drop all of this floured cut beef into this pan and we're gonna brown off this meat and we'll be back all right, let's give you a quick rundown of the ingredients. We've got one red bell pepper cut up fairly fine, one white onion cut up fairly fine. We've got a glass of uh, reasonable red wine, drinkable I might add, barely. I've got a crushed up bay leaf. I have some uh, celery seed. I have about four and a half tablespoons of sweet Hungarian paprika, some tomato paste, and a bit of petite cut tomato along with some cracked black pepper and some sea salt. So we're going to start this thing off here and show you how we're going to combine these to make our Hungarian goulash. All right, we've nicely uh, browned off our uh, beef. We'll go ahead and put in a, uh, I don't know, really decent sized glass of wine into that. Let's see, that's probably quartering on six ounces. And to that we will add our red pepper along with our white onion. Give that a little stir to glaze the bottom of that pan a smidge. Alright, as this is coming up to heat, we can go ahead and put in our Hungarian paprika. I guess that's different than Spanish paprika. I thought paprika was just paprika, but uh, it said spicy Hungarian paprika. See that nice rich broth coming in there. Go ahead and plop the uh, tomatoes in there. We'll do our uh, aromatics and the bay leaf along with one heaping tablespoon of tomato paste. We're going to go ahead and run off some cracked black pepper into this. Nothing too much for right now. We're going to add the last two ingredients, which are the salt and the garlic, 
once this has been stewing for a while. So we'll give this one final stir. I'm going to bring this up to heat and then we will turn it down to low for two hours and come back and take a look at what we've got. And it should be pretty darn good. All right, well, I'll tell you what, this uh, Hungarian goulash is looking good, looking good. And what we're going to do next is I've got about four and a half, five cloves of garlic I've chopped up. Had a little demonstration on the half clove, but it's uh, done now. And then we're going to put in some uh, parsley. And uh, now we'll do a little salting here. We're going to put in some of this Himalayan sea salt. I think it comes from the... Uh, edge of Mount Everest somewhere up there, nowhere near Hungaria, but it still will work. I would say we put in about three quarters of a um, tablespoon of that, and then of course we'll round off a little bit of the old uh, black pepper. Now we're going to turn this down to real low and slow, stir in this uh, salt, I like the salt at the very end here, and then I'm going to take Alright, well, we're going to be serving this Hungarian goulash, uh, contrary to a lot of people's advice of what they do. we got some brusili, some artisan brusili, we're going to put into some boiling water, it's been salted, and we're going to cook this to the manufacturer's recommendation of 11 minutes, cook it al dente, and we'll be back. All right, folks, we're about ready to finish this one off. We've just cooked our pasta off al dente. And now we're going to add about two tablespoons of just regular full strength sour cream to this. Give this the little bit of uh, richness that the dish deserves. I'm sure you Hungarians are completely horrified at this point, but I'm hungry and I'm getting ready to dive right into this. So we're going to take this over to the sampling table and give this dish a test. It's Glenn the Ball Chef and we've just completed the Hungarian goulash. Oh my gosh, this stuff looks absolutely fabulous. May not be exactly what your Hungarian grandmother made, nor what your uh, high school cafeteria teacher put together, but this is the continental cuisine version of this European delight. The red peppers, the paprika, I mean all the spices just come together with the sour cream and just make this really quite magical. I really want to thank you for watching me this evening. If you like what you see, give me a like. If you don't, please tell me why. Subscribe. we got all kinds of crazy things going on. Join me on G+. And as always, bon appetit.